Okay. Gunde hopped up to the top of the train car. He looked out across the plane, looking from right to left, trying to find out why the conductor had come to such a, a such a quick halt. He, he looked over. It, could that be? Was there something on the track ahead? He jumped from one car to the next, scurrying, scurrying all the way up to the, almost to the engine car, but not quite because he didn't want to get the coal on him and get burned by the roof thing. He looked out across, and there was a giant white horse with Gabemi on it. Gunde was like, oh my goodness, is that Gabemi? The great? The spirit walker? He jumped down the ladder on the side of the car and ran past the engine of the car and ran up in front of the engine where the light was. And it had a little Christmas thing on there, even though Christmas had been over for six months. Anyways, he looked at Gabemi, and she looked out at him, and he looked back at her, and he waved to her, and she lifted her hand off the saddle and just did a little wave back. And then he said, Gabemi, and she said, Gunde, and he said, Gabemi, and she said, Gunde, and then they... He, she jumped off her horse, which immediately turned into a little Ferrari race car pocket size, and she put it into her car, or her pocket, in her pouch. And she ran over, and Gunde ran over, and he jumped up to hug her, and all of a sudden he shrunk to half his size. Gabemi and the Incredible Shrinking Rat. Oh my goodness, she said, what happened to me? She said, oh, I'm so sorry. It's part of my shrinking thing that makes the horse turn into a car to go into my pouch. So, Gabemi yeah, said, hold on one second, Gunde. I have to start here. I got this from Alice in Wonderland. It will make you big again. And Gunde said, well, of course, I trust you, my dear. Now, remind, rem you don't know this from the past stories, but they go back for generations. They're both over 700 years old and have fought in all the wars together. The Great Rat War of 76 and all the other wars and Vietnam. Together. They are warriors of space and time. Like Captain or Captain Planet. With their powers combined, they are unstoppable. Look as they stop the train. All oh, right. She gave him the little bottle from Alice in Wonderland, and it made him just go right to normal. In fact, he was feeling a little bit bigger than normal, actually. He was like, well, I'm feeling pretty strong right now. Is it, hey, what was that? Yes, never mind. I won't say that. We're going to keep that one to ourselves, aren't we? Yes, we are. All right. Let's see. Time to check the next chapter. Once they were back to normal, they were like, okay, what do you want to do now? I said, I don't know, mate. What do you want to do? She, he hopped up on her horse, which she had taken out of a pouch and turned back into a horse. And they rode off into the mountains. There was just a niche between the not a niche, I mean a niche a nick. There was a little there was a little groove between the mountains and they ran up upon it and the horse disappeared as the train eventually started to fire back up and move back on down the track. Where are we going? said Gunde. Gabemi was persistent in answering. They said, Well 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 I need to show you something. Gunde was like, well, his feet started to shake. He was getting dehydrated. She said, are you getting dehydrated, Gunde? And Gunde responded, well, yes, I am. She reached around in her saddle and the pouches that she had. The rat and her loved their pouches. And she found herself her water skin, which she then gave and handed to Gunde. Gunde almost dropped it, being just the size of a rat and all, but he quickly grabbed it up with his super rat strength and was able to bask his glorious dehydration with hydration and water, and then he gave back the flask. He felt much better and his legs were no longer shaking from dehydration. They continued on into the path. They reached up higher in the altitudes as they kept going. Gunde started to get cold. Gabemi was like, oh, let me check my pouch. I may have a fur for you to wear. And he said, no, no, it's okay. How about this? I will just jump into your pouch and ride that way. I brought some hand warmers. Will you make them hot and then put them around me, please? Gabemi was more than delighted to help. 
Gunde, her long and trailed battle friend. As they get got closer up on the mountain, she had to get they had to get off the horse. But Gunde did not have to get out of the bag. It was a nice saddle bag that turned into a, a backpack pouch thing that Gibemi wore on her side and across her it was like a sash thing. So they continued on foot, or at least she did, up the mountain now that it was snow everywhere and it's very cold, the wind is howling. There's a temple ahead. We must go to this temple, Gunde. But why? What's in the temple, Gabemi? You will see. Only time can tell you what's in the temple. Oh, Gabemi, can you just give me a hint? They continued to crunch on. The snow was starting to get harder as the temperature was lower and lower at the higher altitudes. Almost like the snow couldn't be soft because the environment was just so harsh that it had to be hard. They came closer and closer. They could see the lights and the torches lighting up around the temple. What would be inside? Are you still awake? Huh? No, so this is like a Buddhist temple, not Zelda. It's okay, go to sleep, Billy. Rest your soul, rest your soul. Let's get back to reading. Back to reading. Back to making up the story, Daddy. <laughs> Gunde was puzzled as to what was going on. Not sure, not to share, but still very trusted in Gabemi. Gabemi said, okay, make sure you do not speak no matter what. Say nothing inside the temple. Gunde was puzzled. He was not sure what to do. All right, said Gunde, fair enough, mate. I won't say nothing. Gunde was apprehensive, but still, again, trusting in Gabemi. They got up to the door. Gabemi went to knock, but then she did not. She grabbed the door handle, a giant latch that had come out of the nose of a lion's face. Not even out of its mouth, but out of its nose. It was just so weird. She lifted the latch, which made a loud chink sound, and opened the door. She had, but it did not move. She had to lean into it with her shoulder and give it a big hard push. And the door creaked so loud, the whole mountain and almost an avalanche occurred. And then they just closed it. It didn't make any noise at all when they closed it. It was really weird. And then they were in absolute darkness. Gunde almost spoke. He almost let out the squeak of his normal ratness. But he held his mouth. He held it tight. He was not sure what to do. He had LED lights in his pouch, but he did not light them up. Even though this would be the perfect time. He, sn he snuck his little head out of the pouch and looked around as Gabemi just stood there. What Gabemi did not have was the power of night rat vision, which Gunde did. Gunde used his night rat vision to look intently across the big open room. He could see pillars and columns uh, up and down and tapestries and great paintings. Great paintings of what? Is that, is that the elephant people? No. They were dragons. Great paintings of dragons. He thought they were just creatures of myth. He thought the mystical, or not the mystical, but he thought the elephant people had killed them off years and centuries before. At 700 years old, and he still had not seen a dragon. Now he, he needed to speak so much. He needed to warn Gabemi of the impending doom that they may possibly face because of the treachery of the dragons. Was his fear righteous? Is something that we should judge something by its cover? A book by its cover? We should not do that. Because then we could be wrong. And then we could miss out on a great thing. But Gunde continued on and let fear rule the day. These giant scaled, fire-breathing, big sharp teeth dragons with their scales and their claws and their different color skin and their eyes piercing, piercing so much. Gunde was scared and he could sense, he could sense a fear in Gabemi. He could feel her shaking. He was not sure why. 
He looked around. He looked around, and then he looked up, and he saw. His eyes met with the eyes, the great, giant, enormous eyes, the size of basketballs. There they were. There was a dragon's face, breathing on Gabemi's face. That's why Gabemi was not moving. That's why she was shaking. That's why she was just not moving at all. Gunde was like, oh no, I think it's time to speak. And Gunde climbed out and got on her shoulder and got in that dragon's face and said, enough, mate. We're not doing this today. And Gabemi grabbed him and threw him back into the pouch. He was so un just did not understand what was happening. Gabemi pushed her hand on top of the pouch, holding Gunde inside. He scurried freakishly, trying to get out furiously. He did not know what to do, so he got out his lighter and lit it up. And he said, fine, I'll heat my way out of here. And he started heating it up and said, Ooh. Gabemi moved her hand away from the top of the bag of the satchel because it was just so darn hot. And she was like, oh! And then all of a sudden the whole chamber lit up with torches in every corner, along every wall. Candles, beautiful giant chandeliers, all with candles on them, all lit magically. And there they could see 16 giant little dragons flying in the air with their little tiny wings and their giant bodies. It did not make any sense whatsoever. How on earth were they holding themselves up off the ground? It must be magic. Or it's from eating lots of rats, thought Gunde. Oh, he had read in books in the past, over 700 years ago, of people eating rats to be able to fly. Yes, the magic runs deep within their veins. Gunde was now in awe. And so was Gabemi. She no longer tried to suppress Gunde. Gunde from running amok and seeing what all of these dragons were doing. And they were cool dragons and weird dragons and odd dragons of all different sizes and shapes and colors. It was so majestic and magical, Gunde didn't know what to do. Everything was magic. Then, all of a sudden, Gunde and Gabemi fell asleep. And they had to tune in next time to find out what happens next. <laughs>